Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Let's render some curves in Octane Render from Moto. Moto's native renderer does a really nice job rendering curves, so we can actually get those into Octane as well. And there's some nice nodes and a few other tricks we can use to get a nice crisp curve rendering. So for our sample curves, I'm going to be using Curve Tracer X. It's a kit sold by Mario Baldi. Um, it's not much. I would get it. I think it's awesome. It's great for motion graphics and things like that. Basically, what it'll do is it'll, let me just uh, flip it on here. It'll trace curves from the vertices of an animated object. So in this case, let me just flip it back up. I have uh, this locator here in the middle that's just doing a 360 spin. And I've got a sphere here. Let me just do a reference coordinate system there so you can see it moving. It's just going um, up and down like that on Y. And so when it's going up and down and spinning, it's zipping around like a DNA helix. And then I just have Curve Tracer X added to as a mesh operation. It's a mesh op, and you add that to an empty mesh, which I've called Curves. Turn that on, and it will start. Turn that on, and it will start tracing curves. And you can do things like um, adjust the lifespan and uh, time, and all kinds of other stuff for the curve type. And it's really cool. It's really pretty awesome. Um, okay, so that's Curve Tracer X. So let's take a look at the rendered curves. First, I'm just going to hit F8 and render this in Moto so you can take a look. So here we are in Moto. Curves are looking pretty good. Let me just go forward a few here. And they look nice and smooth. Now, when I close that and render these in Octane, boom. Octane is able to get the rendered curves, but you'll notice that they're fast a bit here. It's not getting the curve refinement um, correctly or at all, I suppose, for Moto, and it's just using a default value there for uh, the number of segments along the curve. But since we're using mesh operations, we can uh, fix that really easily. I can just add a new mesh operation, the um, curve rebuild, which is right here. And you could up the point count to like 60 or something, and so now you have more points, and so when you take a look at Octane, it's going to smooth those curves out. So that's a really easy way to do it. And you can bump this up pretty good. And it's still really fast. So no, no worries as long as I put a billion of them there. And now we can also we can right click and add an item mask to this. If we want to um, start adding shading, we can also create item mask. We can also just continue to use mesh ops if you want. And uh, I'm going to do a, whoops, let's bring this down here, just a, um, a material tag, whoops, uh, a material tag and mesh ops there, material tag. And that's going to add to the top. Remember, mesh operations go from bottom up, so we're making curves, we're building curves, now we're adding material to the curve, which we'll call curves because I'm super creative. And the one thing with adding a material tag, mesh operation, it's not going to automatically add a group in the shader tree like it would if you just pressed, selected some polygons and pressed M in sort of the standard way of doing things or the uh, straightforward modeling way. So we have to do this manually. We add a group, and then um, just in our polygon tag, you'll see it right there, curves. And then we can add a material to that group. And there we go. So if I were to change this to, let's say, sweet red, then I'm going to have some red curves. Um, but I'm, what I'm going to do is add an octane override, because there's a couple of octane nodes that we can use to get some better curve rendering. Let me scooch out here a little bit. And uh, I can hide our little ball there because it looks kind of bad. Do that. Um, okay, so what nodes can we use? Well, I'm going to disconnect this red color here, and for diffuse, I'm just going to go add a gradient. So new texture, mapping, gradient 2. And we have an input here for gradient 2. If you've seen the uh, gradient input videos, you can see there's a bunch of useful gradient inputs in Octane, and one of these is the W coordinate. And what the W coordinate will do is it gives us a coordinate W from beginning of the curve to the end of the curve. So I can do things like this. I can add my, get to my gradient here, middle click at 100% to make that red, and then go to bright yellow down at zero, and there we go. Looks pretty good. So there we've got that. You can also do things like, um, oh, I don't know, go to opacity and uh, add another gradient. So a new texture, mapping gradient two, and just throw that, uh, same W coordinate in there, and with opacity mapping, you can middle click and, and at the 100%, maybe we'll darken or uh, 
turn that down to zero so we get a nice little fade out on our curves there. You can add, you know, things like emission and things like that to make them glowing and all kinds of cool motion graphic stuff. But uh, yeah, there you go, rendered curves in Octane. Yum, yum!